So let's say I have this website, I went through one of these verification methods, I clicked verify. If it worked, I would get a green check mark that says it worked. If it didn't, I'd get a red X and I'd have to fix it. It seems that, um, let's say I got mine to work. Now, if you click back on, on Search Console, that'll take you back to the, the main top level. And as I said, I've done this already for various clients. This is my account where I do this for different clients. So mine's already all, all filled out here with a, with a bunch of clients. But for you, you'll probably have just one, one set up, the one that, that you did a moment ago. Now, you don't have to do it now, but make a note that you want to add the www version at some point. And that is simply doing the add property again, filling in www this time, and then selecting the method that you did a moment ago, and just click verify. You don't have to copy and paste the code back to your site again. It's already there. That's the weird thing. You just have to tell Google, okay, I also want to track my www version. So you click Add Property, you type that version of the site, and then you just click Verify, basically. Because you've already verified it once, but you need to explicitly tell Google. The point of that is that, yes, you will get different data from both. Uh, I teach in the SEO class, I, I teach this lesson in there too, but we also talk about Bing webmaster tools, because the two big search engines are Google and Bing. Uh, we're not going to talk about Bing in this class, but it's the same sort of concept to verify. But Bing doesn't care if you've got the WW version or the non-WW. You just verify your site and Bing tracks the data. Google, because it was made first and it's older and they think that it matters, they have it's separate, and if you don't do them both, then you're not. Per then perhaps you're not getting all your data, because this will tell you, you got these number of hits on the non-WW version, and you got these number of hits on the WW version. Bing just integrates it all. And so you see from this screen, you will be able to view your your properties, your, your websites via health or via alphabetically. And the thing with this is that uh, the default is by health. And if there's any problem with a website, it'll give you these, these notices. And if you click, it'll tell you what's wrong. It'll tell you, oh, there's some broken code, or it'll tell you you need to fix something. So again, this is also why this is very valuable to set up. Google will tell you what's good or what's bad about your website. So I just have it here alphabetically. Uh, the point of this then is I'm going to click on on one of these addresses just on a on a random client, and what we see on this screen is the um, we see the the statistics. For example, with this client. Uh, current status. There's three columns, crawl errors, search analytics, sitemaps. We'll talk about all of these things in detail. But in general, from this column, uh, this gives us the, the health of the site. The DNS is good, the server's good, robots text is good. This is just saying that the nuts and bolts of your server are good. If there were a problem, there would be a different icon there you can click it'll tell you what your problem is it's telling me here at a glance 33 files are not found 33 addresses I'll explain that in a moment but the first column here is the status of the site in general and the server the next column is search analytics within the last month so this is a month of months, a month's worth of data it's telling me here that there were these number of clicks. People were searching on Google. This website was appearing on Google, and then these clicks resulted. And that day, there were a lot more clicks. Um, that was probably around the day of Cinco de Mayo. And this is a Mexican food restaurant, so that might make sense. But this is telling me my, my clicks within the last month. 4,000 hits, 4,000 clicks to this website. And then sitemaps. 
again, I'll go into all of these things in detail, but the sitemap is basically a document that has a list of all of the pages of your site. Your homepage, your about page, your blogs, everything, your products page. The sitemap keeps track of everything on your site. And so it's saying, this is what it found. Submitted and indexed. We submitted the, the sitemap to this, Google scanned it, and then indexed some of them. That means that in, uh, anything that was indexed basically was saved to the Google database. So when someone searches, <clears throat> when someone searches keywords, they could find our site. If if that content has been indexed, Google can show it to people. Some things, sometimes things are not indexed. So it's just saying there were this many number of images, but not all of them were saved because they might have already been there. So if these columns don't match up, that's okay. But what I might be concerned about is that there are warnings here, or errors. So let's see each of these in detail. If you click on any of these at the top, crawl error. So this is what it's saying. Desktop view, smartphone view, feature phone view. Desktop is a desktop or laptop, you know, nice big monitor. Smartphone is iPhone, Android, any of those. And feature phones, well, that's the nice way of saying a dumb phone. That's the nice way of saying a flip phone, you know, these old phones that really don't do anything. I don't know why they call them feature phones. They don't have any features, but they call them feature phones. Those are the non-smartphone phones. And so in one month, this is showing that there were these errors that have gone down. Less errors have appeared on the website. The smartphone has comparatively many less, but it seems to be increasing. And the feature phone also has less, and it went up and went down. What this is saying, well, errors, that sounds bad. What, what does that mean? What this is saying is that there are these pages here that um, Google can't find. For some reason, that page is missing. With this particular client, there are many articles um, that were written, uh, many blog posts. And the blog post, for example, this one here, Pulque, Drink of the Aztec Gods. Let me just load that up on the website. There's a blog post here about the, the unique alcoholic beverage sold at this restaurant. It's not sold in very many restaurants. It's called Pulque. Over on the blog, um, one of these pages over here, there is this article right here. This article used to be called Pulque, Drink of the Aztec Gods. It was changed to What is Pulque? So what, that, what happened was the address changed. What is Pulque? It used to be Pulque, Drink of the Aztec Gods. So now Google can't find it. That's the error. It can't find the link. This should then tell you, okay, I need to fix that. Either I need to change that address back to what it was, or I need to use some method to redirect the link. And that's the preferred method. So let me make some notes here. In the Search Console, Check your. Let's see, what do they call it specifically? They called it these. They called it crawl errors. Check your crawl errors to see your broken links. Okay, great. It'll tell you your broken links. What do you do about it? Fix them. Either uh, name the pages to the address it expects, or use a 301 redirect to direct traffic properly. So let's say in the real world, someone asks me, how do you get to the bank? And you tell them, okay, you're going to go on Main Street, take a left, go one mile, take a right, and there it is. 
okay, well, the bank moved. The bank moved to another location. So now that address that you gave, that those directions that you gave to the person are wrong. Are you going to put the bank back where it was? Or are you simply going to tell them, okay, drive one mile and this time turn left instead of right? You're going to give them new directions. That's what this is here, and that's the one I recommend. How you actually do it, I can't exactly teach that. That depends on your particular website. If you're using, uh, if you're using WordPress, however, because that's the most popular one, if using WordPress, use the redirection plugin. This is a free plugin that monitors the broken links, so you can check what redirection is seeing, and you can check what Google is seeing. And it monitors it, monitors, monitors it great, but it also then writes code to fix this. So that when Google looks for this address, it finds code that says, actually, this has been moved over here. And Google goes to the right place, and Google no longer counts it as an error. So we want to minimize our errors as much as possible. That could be detrimental to SEO, to our search engine optimization. Why would Google link your website, show your website, promote your website, if it's broken and not, not functional to people? The search engines want to show good content, relevant content, and not broken content. So that's why we want to know, what does Google know what is broken? This is one we haven't gotten to at the moment. This is something we've got to fix. Once we fix it on the website, then I return here, select here, and click, it's fixed. This does work on the honor system, so I, to some degree. So I could select all of these and say, yeah, we fixed it, and click fixed. I won't do that. I will fix the issue and then mark it as fixed. So that's a link that needs to be redirected. In this particular case, for this particular client, there are promotions that run through different times of the year. When the promotion is over, the page is removed, but Google still looks for it like this Christmas page. That one I will mark, it has been fixed. It doesn't exist. It's not Christmas time anymore. So Google, it's not, it's not broken. It's, it just doesn't exist. It's not a mistake. And that's something that needs to go on here. Most of these are going to be fixed via redirects. Like there was the old media.html page, which is now called media contact which needs to be redirected, and so forth. So all of that needs to be fixed at some point. The smartphone has less broken links, but again, this was, the, this, was this event that happened in 2014. And the feature phone. I'm going to go back to the, to the dashboard. That's what's happening on that particular column of errors that need to be fixed. So any questions on that? OK, so then we've got the next column, Search Analytics. If I click on that, this will show me um, when people search on Google the uh, number of clicks that come from that are listed here. Clicks. People saw this client on a Google search, and then these clicks happened within this time period, which is here in the last 28 days. So that day was 5-8, a few days after actually Cinco de Mayo, but it had a lot of clicks on that date. On the actual Cinco de Mayo, there weren't as many half. I'm showing clicks. I could show impressions, the red line. That's much, much higher. And this is very common. This is a very common result here. Uh, impressions versus clicks. So in, in the world of SEO, we have uh, impressions and conversions, impressions, views, 
of your website. And search uh, con conversions, clicks on your website on search. So based on those descriptions, which do you think are more valuable? That people saw your website or that people clicked on your website? That they clicked. So conversions, which Google is showing them there as clicks, right? Uh, Google is showing as clicks and impressions. So impressions and conversions, aka clicks. So people searched, and in that time period, this website appeared to people how many? 10, 109,000 times. It appeared to people a lot. But quote unquote, only 4,000 clicks happened. That's 4,000 clicks in one month. 4,000 hits. So yes, that is a very big difference, but that's very, very common. Very, very few sites have a very high result like that, uh, because then we've got, yes? So the, the impressions, if you do a search for something, and you see a list of 20, 20 results, mm -hmm. that's an impression. That's an impression, yeah. Mm -hmm. Just showing up on the search. On the link, then that's a that's a, that's a conversion, that's a click, yes. Then we've got CTR. Notice there's a column here of CTR. CTR is click-through rate. Well, what are you doing do a search, you got, you know, on the first page you got 20, and on the next page 20, mm -hmm. and they all count as impressions? No, only the ones that they're looking at. If they view page 1, those 10 or 20, that's an impression there. But then if they go on to page 2 or 3 or 10, then those are counted, not just because they, not just because your site exists on page 1 or 20. Okay. It's that they see it on the screen. CTR is click-through rate, which is a ratio, which is basically conversions divided by impressions. That's a percentage. CTR, average CTR. There's a success rate. CTR could be a measurement of success. There's nearly a 4% success rate. 4% of the time, people actually click. You might think, that's terrible. I should be getting 90%. Yes, good luck. Good luck. Because that's very hard to do, especially for free. Because all of this search engine stuff, you can do it for free, or more effectively, if you pay for it. Companies spend budgets of hundreds or thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars to rank on the search engine results page to simply appear more often and then hopefully get clicks and those clicks then result in sales and then those sales are paying for the, for the, for the position. So that's okay that this is 4%. That's actually very good within this time period. It's very much more common for people to have like 0 0.75 or 0 0.22 or maybe 1%. This, this particular client is, is doing well. 4% 4, 4 in this time period is good. With no amount of extra purchasing of like AdSense or Google keywords and all of that. It's just organic reach. And then the last one is position. Okay, when people are searching on average, what position does this appear in? Six. So still page one of results. It's not number one, but it's often in six, sixth place or so, or seventh place or so, but still page one. So you don't have to be trying to get to number one, page one. That's obviously the golden spot, the, the, the gold-covered platinum spot. But uh, anything on the first page is gold. And silver is not so bad either, so second page. Much better than having position on tenth page, which they don't even give you a medal for that. And so here... Okay, well, well, what does it all mean? People are searching for keywords. People are searching with keywords, and it's all listed here. These are queries. People typed in this keyword, and it resulted in this number of clicks and impressions and CTR, 28%. So even that, if people are typing exactly the name of the business, that's still barely better than a quarter percent of clicks. 
which is very common. Okay, wheat la coche. Does anyone know what wheat la coche is? It is, uh, it is a Mexican delicacy, which is a special kind of corn, actually a corn that has been invaded by a fungus that causes it to turn very interesting shades of like gray and blue. You saute with a little butter, put it in a taco, and there's a Mexican delicacy, hundreds of years old, for real. And this West restaurant sells that. It's very, very uncommon in the U.S., but this restaurant sells it. And so people are searching that keyword. This client appears, oftentimes in fourth place or so, 282 clicks. They click on that link, they go to the website, they they buy a wheat la coche taco. These are the keywords people are searching for. Number of clicks from them, again impressions. That looks really impressive, 17,000, but what's the clicks? All right, what's the CTR? In this particular time period, someone searched for barbacoa cooking method. They found the client and they clicked 100% CTR. That's how you're going to get 100% if one person searches and clicks. Then menu history of barbacoa, 66% CTR. That was 12 impressions or 12 searches and eight of them were clicked. What is barbacoa? In what region does it originate? Someone searched for that. 44 people, 22 clicks, 50% CTR. So this is all this free data that, that Google is going to give you. On your particular one, it's probably empty because this doesn't tell you, this doesn't start to track it until you set it up and let it run. It's not going to go back in time to tell you what happened. You have to set it up, set it and forget it, and then come back and check every week or every month or every quarter, and then it'll be telling you this data. What else is this valuable for? I'm going to use Twitter. I'm going to use Facebook. I'm going to use Instagram. And Google is telling me that's a popular keyword. I can use that keyword on Twitter. I can use that keyword on Instagram, LinkedIn, whatever. I can tweet about that. I can post a photo about it. And I'm building more content. I'm building more awareness for this client with that keyword that Google itself is telling me is working. So I continue to make it work. You can see here pages. What are the most popular pages? People visit, does anyone know what this means here, this slash? That's the root of your website. That's your home page, the top level of your website. So the number one trafficked page of this site is the home page. Second place is the menu. Third is contact. Fourth is the history of the food, and fifth is wheat la coche. Like I'm saying, I'm going to open a completely different web browser. I'm going to do a Google search. What is wheat la coche? You're going to get Google results. First result at the moment is the client. Higher than these other guys, Pop Sugar. I think they've been around longer and they're a bigger name. Higher than the Wikipedia article. Usually the Wikipedia article is always number one. Reddit. Reddit is one of the most traffic websites in the world. And that result of the client is higher than Reddit. Higher than the LA Weekly article. So that's a hot keyword for this particular client. So we use it. We, we use it on Twitter. We post a photo of a wheat la coche taco and say, come and enjoy a taco, hashtag wheat la coche. And when people search for that keyword, it could make the client appear more often. You can check the countries. Most popular are US, Mexico, Canada, Australia. Fourth most popular is Australia. Australia is is known for its lamb. This restaurant sells lamb, <coughs> slow roasted lamb barbecue. Devices, 
mobile is more popular than desktop. So that sort of explains it to some degree over here when I was looking at crawl errors. The desktop has a lot more errors, but the smartphone has been the one that's been dealt with more recently because the data shows more traffic is coming to this client via mobile. So we're taking care of that one as soon as possible, no errors. Desktop next, tablet distant third place. The heyday of the tablet may have passed. Search type, web, and then the date, time period. Compare previous 28 to current 28 days. Two months ago, the traffic was. Uh, yeah, two months ago, the traffic was uh, three thousand five hundred. This time, it's four thousand two hundred. So this time period, from compared to the last, has had more traffic than the previous. So that's the whole point of all of this. Google Search Console, getting this data all for free. You just have to set it up. We'll look at one more column here, then we'll take a break. Yes. Total clicks. Would that be on any web? You, know, you go through 10 different pages on that website that the count is 10 clicks. Uh, or is that just counting the first home page? On Google Search Console, I'm not sure. But when we do Google Analytics in a moment, that will tell you in detail. So I think this is a click anywhere on the site, not just the home page, because it does then tell you the data of every page. So I have to double check, but I believe it's for any page on the site, because it's saying here, 1,200 for the home page, plus 700 for the menu, plus 500. So that should be a click anywhere on the site. Okay. So the impression that if it's on page 2, and nobody goes to page 2, that counts as kind of zero impression. Exactly. Okay. Now, is it did, is there a difference in the count between the mobile phone? Maybe it has less room on there on the first, on the first page than the, uh, than the yeah those desktop. factors those and factors sure, also does it compensate for where it's at? Yeah, because the the mobile device is a smaller screen. It's going to show those ten. Uh, on mobile or desktop, but you're going to see more of them on the desktop because it's a larger screen. And a person may scroll down and, and find you or may not and say, oh, these top three here, this is the one I want, and they don't even see you. So it'll count as an impression on either? Yes. It's on mm -hmm. So last column here, sitemap, if I click on sitemaps. So all content, Google sees that there's 161 links on the website and all 161 were saved to Google. Over here it sees that there were 230 pictures on the site but it saved only 115. So some of those may be duplicates so it doesn't save them again. You can see the, the data in different ways like that. This sitemap is a special XML document, it's code, that lists all of the pages and pictures and content of your site. And this is not something that you would simply open up Microsoft Word and start to write. The, the uh, sitemap is a very technical document. Sitemaps are useful, but make sure yours is properly set up. Use a plugin to create it. Check on your website with your particular software. There should be some sort of function, hopefully, for a sitemap, because the computer, the, the machine itself, will create the sitemap and, and a list of all of your pages. A sitemap is very specific. It has to be um, let me see if I can pull it up just to show it. The sitemap looks like this, but behind the scenes it looks like this. 
in that it has all of these special XML tags that talk about last modified, location of the file, date in the UTF format. If you don't, if you write it in regular, you know, twelve-hour time, it's not going to work. It's got to be in in UTC format time and all of that. Again, if you don't know what that means, you don't have to try to create this yourself. I don't do this myself. For these clients, I don't write the sitemap. This is way too complicated and cumbersome. We use a plugin that creates this file, then we submit it to the search engine, it scans it, and then it adds your stuff to the search engine. That's the point of it. <clears throat> a sitemap in, re in real life, let's say, you go to a mall, you go to another city and you go to a mall, and you want to find a specific store. How many of you are going to wander around in the mall until you find the store, as opposed to going to the mall directory, to the map, and then find the place and go to the store? So probably more people want to get there where they want to go, so they'll go check the map. And that's what a site map is for your, for your, for your site. A list of all of the pages and an easy way for the search engine to get to it. Yeah, the one I, I like for for that is uh, for WordPress. Uh, use Yoast SEO. By T Yoast. It's free, and it has many great SEO features, and one of them is easy sitemap creation. That's the one I would use. Alright, so hopefully we should be seeing here the value of setting up this Webmaster Tools. Let's take our first break. When we come back, we'll talk a little bit more about it, and then we'll talk about Google Analytics. And we'll see this as something similar, but with different bits of data. So it's, it's about 7.20. We'll take a break until 7.30, uh, and then we'll go on. <laughs>